There's just something incredibly exciting about survival games where you have to farm, craft, and manage resources all while fighting against nature or deadly foes. The adrenaline kick I get out of these games is simply unparalleled. If survival games are your bread and butter too, then chances are that you are always looking for the next best one to experience either solo or with a bunch of your friends. The hardest part though is skimming through the sea of survival games and finding the ones that are worth your time. With an ever-growing and extensive library of 100 plus games, Xbox Game Pass offers a little something for everyone. There are some amazing survival games in their current catalog and they consistently keep updating it with newer ones as well. Now we've picked these games on various different factors like fun factors, factor, overall survival mechanics, how balanced the games are, what kind of survival game it is, its optimization, and how the game looks. But of course, there's always going to be some that are not on the list. So if there are any that you don't see on this list that you know of, please feel free to comment down below and let us all know the survival games that we should try out. So let's get into this without wasting any more time. My name is Caleb from Cubo Gaming, and in today's video, I'll be going over 10 of the best survival games you can play right now on Game Pass. So kicking things off with a post-apocalyptic zombie game with tower defense and deep RPG elements, Seven Days to Die lets players roam around an unforgiving open world where they have to fight off zombies all while building, maintaining, and expanding their character and home base. Exploring the world allows players to find rare resources and schematics that allow them to craft better weapons, armor, clothing, and components to use on their characters and around their base. Seven Days to Die can be played in four-player online co-op or two-player split-screen co-op can engage in different activities such as farming, completing different quests, and exploring the wilderness for resources and schematics. Oh, and there are over 400 uniquely generated locations for the players to explore. Obviously, you'll have to be careful as you'll encounter different types of zombies as you explore the map. Their behavior will largely depend on their type and the time of day. I personally really like their survival elements of the game, like temperature, your wet state, around 50 different skills and their respective perks, and the whole seven day cycle thing makes it super interesting. All these things make Seven Days to Die an amazing survival game that you should really check out if you own Game Pass. So Daisy is another post-apocalyptic survival game that has zombies, but it's a bit more hardcore and doesn't really provide any kind of narrative direction as to what the players are supposed to do. This is a game that was super popular a couple years ago, but if you find the right friends to play with, this game still has a really solid player base. The dinner idea is that 60 players are dropped into a very, very large map where they have to survive and fight against the infected, other players, wildlife, and even weather conditions. You can also use VoIP to interact with other players and judge whether they're friends or enemies, but in all honesty, generally it ends up in a firefight. But this feature allows you to team up with randoms and up your chances of survival. Honestly, a lot of times players just go rogue and end up fighting each other for supplies and loot. You can find loot of all kinds scattered around the map and hotspots like hospitals and military bases hold better loot. But that also means that hotspots are going to be pretty heavily contested by other players, so you got to be ready for a fight. The random player interactions, wildlife encounters, and close calls as you evade the infected are key factors that make Daisy an excellent survival game offering on Game Pass. Hey, a common example of the Fromicity family. So our next entry shakes up the formula a little bit as it takes away from the abandoned post-apocalyptic cities and zombies and goes into your backyard. Grounded is a survival game from Obsidian Entertainment where the player is shrunken down to a size of an ant and has to survive their backyard by building bases from different materials and fending off absolutely massive insects and deadly spiders. Grounded can be played with up to three players in co-op and has different regions like sandboxes, ponds, and tree trunks for players to explore and uncover the full story, which by the way, the story is actually pretty intriguing and that's really what kept me going when we were playing this game. It's definitely unique and is honestly borderline a horror game considering that the spiders are absolutely terrifying. Oftentimes the only way you know they're there is that you hear their multiple legs just sprinting at you from behind. Overall it's a very interesting concept and definitely worth playing. So a survival game where you survive a plane crash and are stranded with no hope of survival? I know it sounds like it, but no, it's not the forest. Instead, this game is called Stranded Deep. This game is true to its name, hardcore survival experience where players need to manage their hunger, body conditions, thirst, even sunstrokes, and you need to look for supplies to survive just that much longer. Stranded Deep perfectly captures the feeling of 
being alone and helpless at the start. It encourages you to build and craft all your necessary gear items. You can also unlock different skills that are going to be connected to the activities you'll be doing, like cooking, crafting, uh, physical strength, and hunting. The game also has procedurally generated islands, which means that every time you play, it's going to be fresh, it's going to be new, and the experience is going to be unique. Oh, and the game also has split screen co-op, which I assume maybe some of you will use, or maybe not. Regardless, the game is probably best playing solo. Overall, I found the game pretty fun, and the shark element of the game is terrifying, and he's always there looking to kill you. It kind of reminds me of Raft, and you know, sometimes you may get a little fatigue from going to island to island. Some of the islands aren't as interesting, or you know, they can be kind of bland. But overall, if this sounds like something you know you'd be interested in, and you like these types of survival games, honestly, give it a try. So I wanted to explore all major survival subgenres, and in doing so, I ended up trying The Long Dark. And oh man, I gotta say, this game is really hardcore. Probably the most hardcore game on this list. The Long Dark is a solo exploration survival game where you're pitted against the harsh cold conditions of Canada and realistic threats. The game offers an episodic story mode as well as a survival mode where you experience a huge sandbox map where you have to manage your fatigue, hunger, and body temperature levels, which is extremely extremely difficult to do. You also have to loot for supplies and get better gear to survive as long as you possibly can. The survival mode also has permadeath, which ups the stakes even further. The long dark is perfect for those who like grounded settings and are looking for a really difficult survival game, but you just have to know what you're getting into. So Ark Survival kind of reminds me of Conan Exiles and Rust if they were put together and you added dinosaurs into the mix. You get both the environmental and the player base experiences. So if those game types interest you, this game might be for you. So not only do you get to fight players, tame and fight dinosaurs, but you also get to explore and there's also an optional story, which is actually pretty in depth. So this game also starts out like a lot of other survival games where you wake up naked on an island and you have to hunt, scavenge, and loot for resources, all while dodging dinosaurs and other players around the map. The really cool and obviously unique thing about this game is that you can tame the over 100 species of dinosaurs in the game and make them fight for you, or you can use them to gather resources, basically whatever you want them to do. It's an integral part of the game, and you really need to explore that option if you want to survive for any length of time. Honestly, Ark is a game that I seem to come back to every now and then with some friends, but if you're able to get a group of people to play with, honestly, this game is such a time sink and we highly recommend it. Now, this next game on the list is gonna raise some eyebrows for some of you, but you gotta hear me out. Despite the pretty bad launch that Fallout 76 had, right now, it's a pretty decent co-op survival adventure game that you can play with your friends or have some mindless fun. The game allows you to start building bases and camps anywhere in the six regions of the map and hoard supplies in there. These supplies, weapons, and equipment are key for progressing the story of Fallout 76. Oh, and your builds also keep changing based on the armor and weapons you have. And of course, you know, the game didn't have the best launch and it still doesn't have the best reputation, but hey, if you get into the game right now you have three major completely free expansions to play through as well with each of those offering about 10 to 12 ish hours of additional gameplay honestly the game is on game pass so really there's no harm in trying it and if you get some friends to play with you may find yourself enjoying it If you're looking for a cute and honestly one of those games that just makes you feel really happy, Forger is going to be that game for you. It's an open world 2D survival adventure game where you are free to carve out your own path and work towards building your dream base and expanding it however you want. Forager is honestly just some wholesome fun. You get to explore dungeons, solve puzzles, complete quests, and you can even become a farmer. And if growing crops and resources is not your cup of tea, then you can become a merchant and trade for goods. There's really not too much to say about the game. Honestly, if you're looking at the gameplay right now, then you already know that you like the game, if this is the type of game that you're into. One thing you have to keep in mind is that Forager is a solo experience, but you can also summon NPCs to aid you in dungeon exploration. Honestly, Forager is loved by many, and if you're one to like games similar to this, then this is a must try if you have Game Pass.
State of Decay 2 is an open world survival game where you and if you have friends to play with, you and your friends get to explore each other's communities and help build defenses. So each character you recruit in this game will have a unique set of skills, which means certain characters will be good for scavenging and some will excel in combat, which adds a lot of dynamic when you're picking your team. Of course, there are various different types of zombies in the game, each with their weaknesses and their strengths. But I think the most unique thing about the game is the community building and it's it is different from a lot of other zombie survival games because you're more of building a community and working with your teammates than just scavenging the world. The game has a lot of value, which is why it has a very dedicated player base. So if you're looking to get into a game either solo or if you have a group of friends to play with, this game is going to be a very good game to try in Game Pass. Generation Zero is set off in a fictional 1980s Sweden where robots have taken over and armor, weapons, and even ammo types. So Generation Zero can be played either solo or with a group of up to three friends, but I definitely recommend playing this with your friends. Players can approach fights in multiple different ways as the game allows for stealth based as well as aggressive playstyles. A neat trick here is that the damage you deal to the enemies is going to be permanent, which basically means that even if you can't kill a powerful machine on your first try, you can damage it and back off to replenish your supplies and then whenever you come back the machine will have the same amount of health and damage as the last time. I know this game has gotten some bad reviews in the past but they've actually made a lot of progress and the game is actually really good now and it has good reviews and, and people really like it. So regardless of its past and how the game launched I honestly really recommend checking this game out. And those are our picks for the best survival games currently available on Game Pass. Let us know in the comments below what you think of our selection of games, which ones you prefer and why. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to Cubo Gaming for more of the same content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.